the way to work. That's right. We got the shop dog today so that we're extra efficient. Yep. We're distracted. I don't know. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Welcome to Flying Sparks Garage. I'm Emily, a professional model, actress, and gearhead. And I'm Aaron, a diesel mechanic, pilot, and a lover of anything with an engine. The only thing we're experts at is doing our best. He teaches me persistence. And she teaches me patience. All these machines we love are catalysts for making memories. And we are so happy you're here as we seek adventures and learn as we go. I was online this morning watching videos how to take this apart. I think this is a reverse gear. Pretty sure that's it. And so there's got to be something broken in here. If it's not that one, it's going to be the four, uh, the five and six cluster over here. Either way, all that stuff just comes out the back. Um, found this really cool place in Hearst, Texas, which is about an hour and a half drive from us. And it looks like they have all of the synchronizer plates, the rings here. We might want to replace those if they're not tight enough. This reverse gear might be bad. So that's really neat. We've got a place to go to. I talked about it last night that we're not completely overhauling this. And there's a few reasons for that. Uh, like I said, someday we'd like to put a really nice transmission in it and we don't have a month right now. We've got to get a haul truck together. We bought one that has a bad engine. You'll see that on a future episode. The race trailer needs to be done. The boat needs to be done. And so we're just too busy. We got to get this car back together. <laughs> this poor Z car. That one, my arms are almost good enough to get back into that one of them. So that one's coming too. But you know, there's this other part, which is we bought a budget Corvette and to buy a budget Corvette and then go put three or 4,000 bucks in the transmission, like what's the point? And so we're kind of experimenting right here to see, you know, if, if you're at home, do it yourself or a type person, and you just want to get your stuff running again, like let's say you got to get to work on Monday and you took this part on Friday, that's what we're doing here. We're going to try to put the pieces in it it needs, clean all the stuff out, and just see if it works. It's, it's an experiment. If it doesn't work, we'll take it back apart because we get to make another video then and you guys will get to watch another video. I've got really crummy snap ring pliers. Those aren't that great. These are good, but they're not what's designed for this. So let's start just taking stuff apart and try not to lose it. That is a tough little ring. Now the way I do stuff, you may have a different way, but I took it off like this, so I lay everything on the table upside down, and I stack it as much as I can. So now this bearing's coming off. There's a ring right here on top of that. That ring, like I said, we're gonna flip it over, this bearing, flip it over, stack it. That should be another ring there. Oh. Go over. That's a clip. I hope these pliers are good enough for that one. We're about to find out. Flipped over, stacked on there. This one, I've seen some dude use a puller on this one. It looks like it's gonna come off. Oh, there's a... Yep, that is mangled up. I don't know if that's bad enough to cause our problem, but that should be a nice sharp edge on there. And it is clearly ground off. And they're all rounded. Yep. yep. Now we've got this washer or shim, I don't know what you call it. That little dude's buggered oh, up too. Oh, there's some missing teeth right there. See, that's pretty gross. So we're gonna yeah. get another one of those. We'll put that back on like it was. This is exciting to see, like. This is a cage bearing. Okay, focus on me. Okay, cage bearing, those are really pretty. Yep. That goes in there. Okay, look, Aaron. Oh. Dude. Oh. That's the synchronizer ring I was talking about. Okay. 
Okay. Those are not missing teeth. That's machined in there. Oh. Nope. But this oh. thing is just worn out. Dang, I thought that I, that like looked so much like the chunks that we found. And, and so in here you have fiber. That's like a clutch. That's what that's what it is. So it's tapered and it is supposed to slow this big gear down so that all this stuff can synchronize. You can also see that these teeth are just worn out. And they're torn out here and there. So this should go on here. And when you push down on it, it should stick. It should be the point where it spins this bottom gear. It's not doing anything. But that synchronizer is completely shot. That's the guy that's got to be replaced. I mean, it's, look, you push down on it, you can even wiggle it side to side. That's a wedge fit, so that should get tight. Now we have a snap ring here, or C-clip, I guess you call it. And these are terrible little pliers. You need to buy some when we go to the store. Maybe Summit has some nice ones. Yeah. Dang it, I got so excited because I thought I saw broken gears, but I mean, those do look really chewed up. All the forward gears were working great on this car. It was mm -hmm. just the reverse that acted a fool, so it's interesting. Buy tools that don't work. They're so frustrating. Mm -hmm. If you have a brand of snap ring pliers that you love, drop them in the comments. We're in the market for some. Okay, we got that clip off. It was a pain, but we're gonna get a good tool to put it back on. clips coming off were so easy we decided not to film it <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. no actually I told her to turn the camera off because I was about to punch something because we need to get the right tools um, this all just slides off supposedly we just had a burr on this shifter shaft Okay. Shift fork. We're going to replace these with the brass ones because those I've heard will. Yep, look. They'll do that. Mm, mm, mm -hmm. And that's a problem. So, again, gear is worn out. They tell me you can take this and flip it over. See how those are brand new and nice sharp? Nice and sharp. Not so much on that side. So, if I understand it correctly, you can flip this whole unit over and reuse it. That's interesting. Yep. We can ask the transmission shop. Well, we'll just buy one if they have it in stock. Buy this whole assembly. Okay, we have not found teeth missing yet. So we have to go deeper. Ooh. That's how it works when you have a tool that fits it. So this is a different tool out of the this Sonic This is the Sonic stuff, yeah. The other ones were, like we didn't have one this small. That's why it was giving us trouble. So, will that come up now? So maybe Sonic makes the ones we need. Yeah. Look at you go. This is how a synchronizer is supposed to work. See how it's free? I push in on it and it's real tight. Take pressure off, it's loose. That's those brake pads in there. 
stretching it. Which doesn't surprise me because all the other gears work perfect. It was just reverse. Okay. Still looking for busted gears. We just got delivery and it looks like Aaron's getting ready to get to use his new forks that he got for the tractor. Oh, nice. What's that, bud? He said he got these forks on Amazon for a hundred bucks. He's excited to use them. <laughs> We found the weight limit of this tractor. Whatever's in that box is the limit. <laughs> it was 400 pounds, the details said. Yeah, it would have helped if I'd had it all the way back. Hey, it didn't Oh go. my gosh, that was funny. I was trying to hold the camera straight and I was cracking up. That old engine block that's over there? Yes. It's going on the back of that tractor. That old Cummins block needs to be mounted on the back of this tractor. It's got plenty of guts, it just doesn't weigh enough. And I don't help out because I don't weigh anything. <laughs> Hilarious. Glad it worked. Oh my god. My little $99 forks. Yeah. Perfect. They were so good. The tractor and I will get along just fine. It's not big enough, but it gets the job done. Kind of like me. <laughs> Damn. That's not true. So I was looking for parts this morning and I wanted to be able to drive and get them. So I found Texas Drivetrain Performance. They do all kinds of cool stuff with T56s and other transmissions. And this is a place you mentioned earlier, right? Yeah. This morning? Yeah, absolutely. I like their website. It's like easy to find the stuff I need. So I called them and I said, you know, how long does it take to rebuild a transmission and what do you charge? And they said, you know, it's, it's usually around 2000 bucks and we can do it in a week. And I said, okay, well, I'm trying to fix it myself. And he said, well, that's cool. We got, we have all the parts you need. And I said, but I'm a little bit intimidated because the parts I found are not in the back box. They're in the main case. And so I got to take the main case off and I really don't know what I'm doing. And he said, dude, just, he said, knock the roll pin out of the shift fork, take your bolts out of it and slide it up. He said, you'll, you should be able to find whichever gear is messed up. And he said, the cool thing is you can bring it to me in a box. Like it doesn't matter to me if it's taken apart or not. He said, so just have some fun with it, take it apart. And if you can get it back together, we'll sell you the parts. If you can't just drop it off. So I think that's where we're at. I don't mind spending the 2000 bucks. It's, you know, the car's worth it. The week to wait is a lot less than a month. So we may do that, we may not. But for now, let's just see if we can get it in two pieces and, or 200 pieces in this case. <laughs> and But the guy was super cool and nice. And you know, the way I would talk to somebody else that's trying to do something for the first time. And I appreciated that. So either way, we're gonna get parts from him or we're just gonna take it to him and drop it off. So feel good about that. Yeah, when he called, we were talking about calling them and 
<laughs> asking them about the transmission and everything and the typical answer that we would expect from a mechanic would be like well if you've worked on it we're going to charge you extra <laughs> yeah. and uh he was really happy to talk mm -hmm. to that guy on the phone that was really nice and chill about it so. yeah and the other cool thing is he said the great news about it is if you take it apart yourself when you bring it in we can tell you pretty closely what it's going to cost you know, if you just bring them a, a put together transmission, they don't know what's going on inside. So he said, I can look through your bucket of parts and tell you about what it takes to put it back together. We really are at no risk right now. Used transmission's 2,500 bucks. A rebuilt one's 2,000 bucks. This one's worth nothing until we get it fixed. The other thing is, I know for a fact, if I put all the reverse parts in it, put it back together, this thing would feel like a good transmission because it worked well before. But when we're on those long road trips, I'll be thinking about those gears we found in there and it's just not worth it. The peace of mind's worth a little bit of money to me. Let's see if we can fix it ourselves. If not, old boy's gonna get a job. We knocked this roll pin out. He told me, he said, you won't be able to see where it goes, but you have to get it out. It's moving, but I'm afraid my tool's a little bit too small. There it went. So that should slide on right now. Yep. Bingo. Okay. See, I was concerned about that because I was like, well, if I knock the roll pin through, I have no way of knocking it back in. But he said, don't worry about it. Just pull the case off. He said, get your bolts out. Pull this up kind of quick. He said, otherwise you'll be wrestling it too much. I was reading some of the YouTube comments, which I typically don't do, but I was feeling extra adventurous. And uh, get a lot of comments, you know, kind of giving me a hard time about the way I do stuff. Like I use a hammer too much and I use a steel hammer instead of a dead blow. Or a brass. Or Lots of people said we need a brass, brass hammer. Yeah. And um, the thing is, I'm not offended by it. The thing to, to recognize about the way I do stuff is I grew up out in the country and we didn't always have the right tools for the job and we didn't always have the parts we needed. So sometimes when you see me reuse parts that are still good enough, it's because of that. I mean, I spent 20 years just making stuff work again. And so I didn't go to college and, and be taught that you have to have a different screwdriver for a flathead. I just learned to make it work. And I'm proud of that because I can make stuff work. The reason I brought that up is not to to like pick on the people making fun of me. It's to encourage you guys just to get out there and do it. You know, start with the tools you have and the projects you have and just get in the shop and do it. There's always a way to figure it out. You can gather more, more tools, more knowledge, naturally will as you do this stuff long enough. All right, take the bolts out. Yes. I'm tired of holding. Here's, here's the moment. Okay, so do I need to be prepared to like hold stuff or? I don't think so. Go ahead and pull those bolts out. I don't know what they do, but I know that's a pin, but I don't know what it goes to. Yeah, it might be holding some gear in place or something. Yeah. Earlier, whenever Aaron was talking, I was going to say that what he grew up working on were heavy diesels, 18 wheelers. So these trucks were running millions of miles. And so the shop that he grew up in had no like sides it's just an open air shop freezing in the winter sweating in the summer just like heavy duty stuff and i respect it a whole bunch because 
you know, they did these engine overhauls in this really rough environment, but these trucks ran for millions of miles and hauled food and, you know, all kinds of important stuff all across the country. And that's what he grew up doing. Mm -hmm. A lot more important than the engine builds that we do in our shop, so. It does seem like the... Oh, Here's the roll, roll pin. pin. So I think it was just some wiggling around of this thing and here's our little roll pin that kept it in place. That oh, freed it up. Years. Look at there. <laughs> See anything broken yet? That's a T-56 without its clothes on. Yep, she be naked. Put that on OnlyFans. Put that on the thumbnail to get the clicks. I don't think it would. No. The inside of an automatic transmission is nuts. This is just like, you just have to know which gears go where and then slide them on and you're good to go. But dang, mm -hmm. it's still so intimidating. Yeah, that's a fun fact. Emily's rebuilt auto trans and I never have. Well, I've had a hand in a rebuild. Good. There was a professional walking me through the rebuild that I did, and that was a long time ago, actually. Mm -hmm. It's an episode long, long ago. Here's your old shift fork. The secondary one. Papa! I love banging gears. That all looks good. Uh, oh, let's see. I like this one. The cool thing is, once we get this apart, if we decide we can go back together with it ourselves, is we can take this up to that place and show them all the pieces, and they can just go grab it off the shelf. They can tell us if it'll run, if it won't. That's really nice. That's gonna be cool. Put some wear on it. So he asked me to get this roll pin off the shifter. Got it? And... You might have to go the other way down. Input shaft. There's your teeth missing. No way. <gasps> Holy there. cow, look at that. Yep. And that's on that outer gear for the input shaft. Wow. This first gear launches. <laughs> really? Do you think it is? Uh, I don't know. I I'm, assume that's first gear. I mean, that definitely looks like something that would happen from like launches like mm -hmm. torque it doesn't look like a normal wear piece or whatever wear item interesting cool yep. broken stuff now how about that how about that the last gear that we took out is a broken one <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true but at least we found it and i'm sticking with my idea that would have ran forever because the pieces had already made it to the magnet. So they're not gonna bounce around in there. I guess it could chew some more off, but we need an input shaft. Yeah, I'll, I'll say. Input shaft and all the reverse parts, and we're good to go. And some of those shims or whatever those things were. Oh, those rings to hold it? Yeah. Oh, that one shim. That yeah. one was like really nasty. Yeah. So we will load all these parts and take them to that trans shop so they can look at everything and make sure that all of our other components that we think look good are still good to run, or what do you think? A rebuild kit, a stage two rebuild kit, which comes with the, the brass things pads. on here, pads. It comes with all the synchronizers and it comes with new bearings. 
is about a thousand bucks. And then I put it in there and then put it back in the car and it doesn't work. I'm like, do I want to fool with that or I just don't know. For another thousand, have them do it where. Right. Yeah, that's the. It's a guarantee. Yeah, in fact, there would be a guarantee with the warranty. <laughs> but, I mean, the transmission's in excellent shape. It's just that input shaft and the reverse messed up. It would feel pretty cool knowing that that we did a transmission rebuild. Yeah. But. And I've done it a lot on trucks. I just, this tinkery stuff, this little dinky parts and junk. <laughs> Y'all, we're taking a uh, break on this. I think we're at a stopping point there. And we're getting ready to pull the torque tube and look at the rear main seal situation. Um, I've already got my tripod set up right there for the shot to take that. Looks like a skid plate, but it's like got a thousand bolts holding it on kind of thing. We're gonna zip that off and see what the situation is to pull the torque tube. And the sun is setting, it's like 5.30 in the evening, but this one's still raring to go. That's right, raring for you to go. He's got a newfound energy, which I love. Topo Chico. Topo Chico. It gives you wings, evidently. Yeah. It's the new Red Bull. And uh, yeah, so let's get going. Let's do it, stop talking. <laughs> So I got two of those torque two bolts out and then the top one on the passenger side had this wiring harness that was over it and it was really frustrating me. So I said, okay, Aaron, you jump in here. And I am going through bolts and labeling them and organizing all the stuff we've taken apart, like bolts and stuff. So teamwork. God, I am getting so filthy working on this freaking car. Ooh, oil leaks. Aaron said I, in fact, got three out, not two out. I wasn't giving myself enough credit. <laughs> okay, he said, uh, okay, come get your hands on this torque tube. And then he winked at me. What does that mean? Just kidding. <laughs> he didn't wink, but that would have been funny if he had. I think it's about to come down. You get it on your shifter? Yeah, it's clear of the floor. Well, I thought it was. It wasn't. Sorry. thing made us earn it. Mm -hmm. Oof. And there's the sleigh. Dang. Bear watch out, dog. You better watch out. All right, babe. Cool. Get it with your tractor business. Yep. That's awesome. Well, that's it for us for the night. <laughs> it's time for a shower. We're gonna just let the uh, Corvette sit and rest here for a moment and we will see y'all in the morning. We'll see you tomorrow, little shop. Right, Finley? Tomorrow's another day to rent.